Captain's Log. Day 1000. Our efforts continue in meticulously mapping out this vast great sea. This ocean that seems to stretch on into infinity. This morning, I saw on the horizon what can only be described as an incorrectly colored whiskash wrapped around an Eiffel Tower-like structure. I had not a clue the symbolism of this find, but upon sailing toward it, the lookout warned we were straying too far from the task at hand. Said task seems to slip my mind out on these waters. Days run together and become weeks. Weeks become fortnights. Fortnights become seasons. Then suddenly, it's a thousand-day voyage. And still going. Somehow. Someway. Wow. A thousand days. We sure have <laughs> We do not we? know what the fuck we are doing. Like, well, I mean... Part of it is... Well, wow. Because, like, just just the, the culture behind Let's Plays has changed just in the past three years alone. We, 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 we don't get paid for these. This is a nope. hobby. We are... And, you know, I've basically said, I don't need your money. Uh, and I don't upload videos anyway, so it's like... <laughs> like, I've tried. I've I've probably scrapped four or five Let's Plays. Six, this point. Seven, eight, Six. nine. Like, it's... It's right now... Well, especially right now, or at least where I'm at, it's a tough hobby to stay up on. Uh, you know, work gets in the way, and other life stuff. Other life stuffs. Holy cow. The so there, there's a significance this. to the warship we just destroyed, I believe. I had two siblings in high school the year we started this. Now I have zero. Holy cow. We got another Triforce chart. It's the one you get by destroying the little warship. Which... It's, it's kind of interesting because... There is a way to completely make this game unwinnable. Really? Because if you destroy the warship that gives you the Triforce chart... And then proceed to not pick up the Triforce chart... Like, you like, go elsewhere... Uh, I'm pretty sure that warship does not respawn. Wow. And the, the... And the, the chest is gone. Huh. That's interesting. I didn't think it would do that. I would think that they catch that at least for the re-release, and they fixed other stuff. They fixed well, the Well, I don't know if they catch that for the re-release. I did not test it. Ah. Because... I didn't know that, and I played the original... What, like 13 years ago? Yes. Like, I was... I've got employees at work who are younger than Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> and I realized that the other day. And I'm, lo I'm looking at this one guy, I'm like, Good God, you are younger than Duke Nukem Forever. And he had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> of course not. How could he? Would, How he would have been... Have? He would have been 12 when it came out. Yep. And it was a development for 14 years. <laughs> well, like, holy shit! It's like, wait a second. I okay. I got a couple funny anecdotes. So <laughs> as of as of this recording, I am all, not even 24. I turned 24 in 22 days. Yes. I have had one of our other managers say think I'm in my late 20s. I've had my boss think I'm in my early 30s, and I've had one of my employees, his wife, com completely thought I was the same age as they are. They are both 35. <laughs> Alright, and I'm like, I'm already a grumpy old man. Yes. Like, like... You are, he, the, the process is already starting for you turning into Cranky Kong. These damn teenagers <laughs> going up to my store, <laughs> not that? buying anything... Like, the, like, six will show up, one of them will buy something, and they'll just hang out making a mess, you know, you know just leave it, leaving crap everywhere. Get off my lawn! So. Yeah, I'm already a grumpy old man. I tell my dad this, and he thinks it's hilarious, because he's been a grumpy old man since he was my age. 
if not younger. It's just, it's, it's just one of those realities. Ocarina of Time didn't take this long for us to get through. What the hell? <laughs> like, I'm ha I'm having a moment here. Yeah. A moment Ugh. of what the fuck? I, like... Cause it, well, granted, it's a hobby. Like, we do this when we can. Yes. And our, our schedules have to sync up. Which is, like, the most adult which thing Which they I've rarely said. do. No. Even though we work practically the same hours. We do, but... Because <laughs> life gets in the way, and, like... And <laughs> fuck that, right? I know, like, I don't have time... I barely have time to play the video game... To play video games, really, anymore. Like, even on my days off, I got crap to do. Adulting is hard. I wish I wish I appreciated... Like, I'm at the point now where I'm like, man, I did not appreciate being a kid. And that's, like... That's an era of, li like... I don't know the demographic... I, so few people are gonna watch this. Maybe five at most. And it's like... And I, you can't even make a demographic out of that. <laughs> But, like, for those of you who watch this and are super young, like, you get to a point where, where you're like, man, you know, being a kid was fun. I did not appreciate it. Like, I wish I could have gone back and appreciated it. But existential uh, realizations aside. This is I a still, video game that we're playing. Yeah. I still haven't finished this on my my for my Wii U copy. And I haven't even started Twilight Princess. We like in the time it's taken us to do this, the game's come out. It's run its course. The next game was announced. The next remake was announced and released. And they've already announced the the next console's release. Like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever worked on another project that lasted this long. Like, I've already spent a third of the video just talking about how long it's taking oh, yeah. us to make these videos. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, we knew this was filler. That's that's probably part of it. Cause yes, that that is a, that is a part of it. I decided to record all of this for, I don't know what the fuck, but for completion's sake. I I suppose, because. You know, I wanted to be thorough, like, completely thorough for once. God, I forgot how aggressive the balloon was in this game. Well, it's not like we can do... We, li we live 1,500 miles away from each other. It's not like we just do the, the two best friends play thing and just sit on a couch and yuck it up. Just for yucks. Yeah. Like, it'd probably be an easy... I don't know how slow beef does it. Oh. oh, man. Well, part of it is, like, I have, like, completely... I have almost completely dropped any, like, news sources for the games industry by yeah. this point. So I don't really have anything relevant to talk about anymore. <laughs> Things will pick up in a couple of parts, I promise. Yeah. I know I down I know I downloaded the Kindle version the Kindle copies of uh the untold uh story of Japanese game developers. And I read through those in like a day. <laughs> the the second one starts the second one starts out really interesting because um and I know other people have covered this, but like it's basically an uh, an amalgamation of a whole bunch of different people's interviews into one anonymous one, because it, it discusses the the yakuza's involvement in the Japanese game industry, um, to the point where one of them, uh, his their sister was uh, kit was abducted by the yakuza, and he basically told them to give her back by taking the uh, the he you know it was a rival game development company. So he took one of their arcade cabinets and dropped it off a, off a crane right in front of their building. 
and I basically and basically sent him a letter saying this will this will be your employees. So, and that's how we got his sister back. And that's the she, plot of Yakuza Six. Yo, that'd be an interesting plot. Actually. <laughs> the Yakuza game, a series I have never played because I don't own a PS2. I've never owned. I've owned a. I own, we owned a PlayStation One when I was like six, and we had football and Spyro, and I hated both of them because they weren't Nintendo sixty four. So, so that's that story. <laughs> that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Like I mean, I've always I'm, I'm, been. I'm pr fan you might have a little bit more appreciation for Spyro nowadays. Yeah, no, I definitely, I've definitely been contemplating like just buying a PS2 online and just getting all those games that I missed, and then just like <laughs> taking a week off of work and sitting down and playing a ton of video games, or just playing them in, in whatever free time. Because I don't watch TV. So it's not like that's taking up my time. Like you, I get, you have I joined get, me in not watching yeah. any television. Like it's not even hooked up in, anymore. <laughs> um, it, it's solely for the people I live with, and it's like, you know, I, I don't need it. I don't need that shit. I, I, if I really want to watch a show, I can watch it online. There's tons. Like most most TV shows now are available legally online anyway, so it's not even like uh, through through various it'll... like network apps or Hulu yeah, or yeah. Netflix or what have you. So I don't have to resort to nefarious means in order to watch shows I want, and I don't really even watch shows anyway. Like I don't like being that passive with my entertainment anymore. Um. The books and video games kind of ruined that concept for me. It's like, well, books are pretty passive, but it, not really, because, uh, yeah, like, you aren't influencing the story at all, but the way it's presented is still kind of in your own brain. Like, you, you it gives you... The way writing works is the writer gives you the pieces for you to put together... But you have to put it together in your own brain and create the images yourself. It's like Lego. Oh, except oh, not man. monstrously expensive. Holy cow! I got into Lego in the pro in between parts. Like I have like I have them next to me. Uh, let's see. I got like eight. They're they're all Star Wars vehicles. I got like eight. Sets. Okay, so it's even more monstrously expensive. Yeah, no, I got like I got uh, in terms of cheapest to most expensive. I guess it'd be like Ray's Sand Speeder, uh, Luke Snow Speeder, um, the Tie Fighter Bomber, the uh, Pose X Wing, the A Wing versus uh, Darth Vader's Advanced Tie Fighter. The, uh... Shit, what's the bad guys in the new one called? The... Fuck. This is gonna piss me off. I can't believe I can't remember this. Not the Resistance. <laughs> um... The Remnants or whatever? The bad guys! I have their TIE Fighter. The red and black one. And then I have Kylo Ren's shuttle. That was the sound and, oh. effect of Lego hitting the friggin' table or floor or whatever, just to prove that... I don't know. No, I dropped a... I, I was messing with the screw. Oh, and I have the Millennium Falcon. I can't believe I forgot about the... It's, it <laughs> how, do you, uh, is it, how do you forget about something like that? It dominates the fucking shelf it was on. It was the most expensive one. Not, not been... only is it, like, one of the more iconic things of Star Wars, but it's fucking massive. It, it's huge. Like, it takes up... It takes up a good, like, 25% of the shelf space I, I have uh, allocated for my Lego. Um, yeah, I may have... Uh... So... Uh, I was... The way I got into Lego, because this is actually kind of a funny story, I, I had started working at a bar. And after work, I was at Walmart, and I had had a few beers after work, and I was more than a little tipsy. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm looking at the, the Poe uh, X-Wing, and I'm like, and me and my inebriated self thought, man, that thing's rad. I'm going to buy it. And so I bought it. <laughs> and I get home, and I set it to where the, when I woke up, I would be looking at it. And I wake up, and I'm sober, and I'm like, God, that was too expensive. I'm going to put, I'm going to take it, I'm going to return it tomorrow. So I worked that night. And I get home, and I've had a few beers after work again, and I decided, you know what, screw it, I bought it, I'm putting it together. And so I put it together, and it was super fun, and that spawned me into buying a whole bunch of other Lego. Um, I'm not allowed Amazon on my phone anymore, because I'll just buy shit. <laughs> it's really bad. You can't uh, stop. Last night, I, I spent $300 on an analog synthesizer. Jesus. I've been really getting into music recently, like, with guitar, my guitar and my bass. Like, I'm like, oh, but synths are so cool. And I saw it, and I saw... Like, it's not like I just saw it and immediately bought it. I looked up, like, demos of it on YouTube, and I looked at my... I'm like, well, I have the spending money for it. I mean, this means this means I won't be able to get any Legos for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought it. I'm gonna play with it. <laughs> it's just like really. It's my I need to get my own. I need to get a place for myself apparently because I don't have room for all the crap that I have now. Like my Legos. My I get. I don't even have a bookshelf for my books. I've got them piled up on my end table in the corner, three feet high. Duh. <laughs> like, are they like precarious or? No, no, it's pretty stable. But like, it's just a lot of fucking books, and I've read all of them. Most of them, well, some of them. A, a lot of them, like two 90%. of them. <laughs> I think the only ones I haven't read. Uh, are pretty much because they are the only. Well, the only one I know I haven't read is the Star Wars novelization trilogy that I have. Um, but the rest are either ones I've read or copies of ones I've read before. Uh, basically, basically the goal of a personal library shouldn't be when someone walks in they shouldn't they shouldn't be able. To ask, oh wow, you've read all those? Because there should be just so many books that they already know the answer. <laughs> but I'm getting there. I've read Dune. I read Dune for the seventh time this week. Fucking love that book. Movie adaptation, however. Oh, it's. It's bad, but it's still entertaining. <laughs> it's like Samurai Cop, except like less overtly bad. It's like uh, it's like Metroid of the Rim without the entertaining part. I think Samurai Cop Two was announced and released in the time it took to. God damn, three years. I'm having trouble processing. This, to be honest. <laughs> and still going. Because we started this what? October two thousand thirteen. My... When did I get my Wii U? Was it that around that time? It may have been. Have I really had my... I have not played it often enough, clearly. God damn. And they've already... The, the NX already comes out next year. Um, I believe in March. So, uh, like, it's, it, is, it is mere months away. So how about that there Pokemon Go still not being out in the States? He says, dating this even further. <laughs> Who cares? No one watches these. I'm barely... I'm not even really watching this. I'm just kind of like babbling in the microphone while my eyes sort of glaze over while watching the video stream. Yeah. We're uh, we're nearly done with the map of the Great Sea, as we're gonna see in a moment. Yeah, it only took us how many parts? Uh, well, I think we started around part twenty. Fuck. <sighs> All right. Um, fill time.
Damn, I'm not as good as I'm not as good as improvising as I used to be. Well, I used to be an improv in an improv group. And that's that story. And then I and then I graduate I went from to high school and I stopped caring about that. So that's how that ended up. Yep. I don't know. Oh, I remember this island. Oh no, yes. This, this is a different island. Well I remember it, but it's not the one I was thinking of. Man, it's been a while since I've played this game. Because my sister has my GameCube copy. Yoink. <laughs> I love that. That's the solution to that particular art piece. Man, we, there's still tw 20 yes. pieces to go. See, that's that's one thing I well, hear Well, most about. of them are in the sea. Yeah. Because uh, that's one thing I did like about this one, is that it really kind of utilized every aspect of the game... of gameplay to really, uh... Uh... to get the collectibles, and I'm, I'm worried that Breath of the Wild is going to focus too much on the uh, survival aspect, that we're not really going to get any of the puzzle stuff anymore. Oh. We're already talking about Breath of the... We'll, we'll, like, we'll have to wait and see on that. Like, the Wii U Zelda game was supposed to be this huge thing coming up, and now it's already been announced for the dual release, whatever. The dual release Twilight Princess-like. Yeah. And it's a survival game. I don't know how I feel about that. No. Oh. When it comes out, I'll buy it anyway. Just because... My God, holy cow, the Wii U is just re-releases the console. You had re-release of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. You had Star Fox Zero, which is, at least plot-wise, just Star Fox 1 again. You had, I don't know. You mean Star Fox 64 again? 64, Well, yeah. partially. Well. It, it's complicated. Yeah. You had Yoshi's Woolly World, which I think was, what, Yoshi's Story? <laughs> it's, 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 uh, the Yoshi Island games brought back to their actual glory after the terrible, terrible Yoshi's New Island. Uh, or, hey, you had Super Mario 3D World, which is just Super Mario 3D Land. Um, New Super Mario Bros. U, which is just, re, re like, I love Nintendo, like, and I'm, I'm one of the ones to be like, oh, you know, it's not just rehashes and whatnot, but this one was just rehashes and whatnot. And I'm hoping that... The, uh, so what, was it the GBA, the re-release, re the handheld? Pretty, yeah, pretty much, actually. But at least that one had a lot of good, like, original titles, too. And I, I know the Wii U has some, has good original titles, too, but, like... Friggin' Bayonetta was a re-release! Technically, yes. Bayo 2 was really good, though. Full LP confirmed. 2022. <laughs> We're still around it, it, in that say, year. Kamiya has expressed interest in making a Bayo 3 and, an, and another Okami game, so... Okami would have been really good on the Wii U, actually. Anyway, we're almost done with this mapping of the Great Sea, so see you next time for its completion.